Hello boys and girls, welcome to our study which is called The Rock and the Sand. I invite you now to bow your heads with me to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, I thank you for this day. Thank you for creating this world and for Jesus who died for our sins. Please be with us as we study. Draw us closer to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us now sing the song, The Wise Man Built His House Upon the Rock. Then we will listen to our mission story and our lesson study. After, we will hear from Grandpa Harvey and sing the song, His Banner Over Me Is Love. Let us begin. Best Birthday Present Nastia became best friends with another girl named Nastia at the Seventh-day Adventist school in Tokmok, Kyrgyzstan. Let's call the girls Nastia 1 and Nastia 2. Nastia 1 and Nastia 2 like to paint and draw with colored pencils. Nastia 1 and Nastia 2 like to sing. Nastia 1 and Nastia 2 like to read. But Nastia 1 like to do one thing that Nastia 2 didn't do, go to church every Sabbath. One day, Nastia 1 told Nastia 2 that she was a Seventh-day Adventist, and invited her to go to church together the next Sabbath. Why should I go to church? Nastia 2 thought. She didn't believe in God. She was certain that God didn't exist. After all, a loving God wouldn't have allowed her mother to die, leaving her to live with her grandparents. Turning to Nastia 1, who was waiting for answer to her invitation to attend church, Nastia 2 asked for time to think. Let's discuss it later, she said. Nastia 2 thought about the church for several days. She wanted to make Nastia 1 happy. She also wanted to see what people did at church. She asked grandmother for permission to go. Grandmother was furious. That church isn't ours. Grandmother shouted. Why do you want to be like them? This conversation is over. Two days later, Nastia 1 asked Nastia 2 whether she had made up her mind about going to church. I asked grandmother, and she said that I can't go, Nastia 2 said. Ask her if you can come to a youth meeting on Friday night, Nastia 1 said. I'd be very happy if you came. 
Nastia too waited a week for grandmother to calm down. Then she asked whether she could go to the youth meeting. Grandmother listened carefully to the request. When she learned that Nastia 1 would be at the meeting, she agreed. She liked Nastia 1. The next day, Nastia 1 and Nastia 2 went to the meeting at an Adventist pastor's home. The pastor and his wife led nine teens in singing, and they read about Solomon in the Bible. Nastia too enjoyed the meeting, and the people were kind and friendly. She decided to go again. She attended the meetings nearly every Friday for two months. She wanted to go to church too. One Friday morning, the day before her birthday, she decided to ask grandmother for permission to go to church. But she was afraid that grandmother would be angry. She prayed, God please help me to know about you. I want to know more about you. Then she went to grandmother, tomorrow is my birthday, she said. As a present, could I go at least one time to church? Grandmother was not pleased, but she agreed to allow her to go. It's your life, she said. Do whatever you want. Nastia too loved the church. She especially liked Sabbath school. It was the best birthday present ever. It was one of the happiest days of my life, she said. I was able to learn more about God. Today Nastia doesn't go to church every week, because grandmother sometimes doesn't allow her. But she goes as often as she can. Now I believe in God, she said. Part of the 13th Sabbath offering three years ago, helped construct a gymnasium at Nastia's school in Tokmok, Kyrgyzstan. Thank you for supporting Adventist education in Kyrgyzstan and elsewhere in the Euroasia division. Hi everyone, it's Aunt Frenita and we're studying Lesson 9, The Rock and the Sand. The message is, I am joyful when I build my life on Jesus. This week our memory verse is, My God is my rock, in whom I take refuge. Psalm 18 verse 2 Have you ever built a sandcastle on the beach? Even though you build it high and you pat the sand until it is firm, what happens when the foamy waves wash around it? A long time ago, Jesus told a story about that. One day, Jesus sat on the side of a hill, talking to hundreds of people seated on the grass in front of him. Jesus knew about storms and floods. So did the people seated around him. Many of them had lived near the Sea of Galilee all of their lives. When they were children, they probably played at the water's edge. Jesus loved the people so much, he wanted them to understand about God. He wanted them to understand how to be joyful. Maybe a story about building at the water's edge would help them understand. And so Jesus told this story. Once, a man decided to build a house. He chose a high, rocky ledge on which to build it. The water wouldn't flood his house. His house would be safe and the foundation strong. The man worked hard carrying the building materials all the way up onto the rock. After the house was finished, the rains came down, the wind blew and blew, the streams grew bigger and bigger, overflowing their banks. Now there was flooding to worry about, but the house was safe. The man had built it on a strong, firm foundation of solid rock. That makes sense, doesn't it? The people thought so. They all nodded and said, Amen. And Jesus told them, If you listen to God and live for me, you are building your house on the rock. And all the people nodded and said, Amen, again, because building on rock made sense. Then Jesus continued. His story was not done. Another man built himself a house. The man chose to build his house on the sand at the water's edge. He probably built a strong house, too and he probably worked very hard at it. After the house was finished, the rains came and pounded it. The wind blew and blew. The streams rose higher and higher and overflowed their banks. Soon they flooded the house. The waves beat and beat against the house, washing away the sand underneath it. 
and the house fell in with a mighty crash because there was no deep, firm foundation supporting the walls. What a foolish man, the people may have thought. He should have known better. And so he should have. But listen to what Jesus said next. When people listen to my words and do not do anything about them, they are as foolish as that man. They cannot expect to be joyful. The wise person not only listens, but is willing to do what I say. The people opened their eyes in amazement as they listened to Jesus. His teaching was very different from the teachers of the law they usually heard. Some of the people may have even remembered what David said in Psalm 18 verse 2. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. I wonder how many people who heard Jesus that day were willing to build their lives on Jesus? How many wanted to study and live by God's word? How about you? This podcast is read by Franita Buddy for Gracelink.net. Created and produced by Falvo Fowler. Post produced by Faith To at Studio El Piso. The theme music is by Clayton Kinney. For more information, please visit Gracelink.net. He called me